Hello there, welcome. This is a video tutorial on solving the one-dimensional heat equation using some standard numerical techniques. First, let's have a look at the equation. What is this equation? It is the relation between time derivative of temperature with the gradient of temperature at any given point and at any given instant of time. Here, alpha is the constant of proportionality and it is called as thermal diffusivity. It remains as a constant for most of the metals or a wide range of conditions. Now that we have seen the equation, let's try to understand it a little deeper. Let's imagine a metal rod that is unevenly heated along its length. Say one end it is hotter, the other end it is cooler. There is a variation in temperature distribution along its length. Due to this variation in temperature distribution, there will be a heat flow in the metal rod from hotter zones to colder zones. Due to this heat flow, the temperature at colder zones will rise and the temperature at hotter zones will fall. That's intuitive, but how do we relate the rate at which the temperature rises at a point to the temperature distribution around that point? That's where the 1D heat equation comes in handy. In the equation, the left side term is time derivative of temperature at a given point. The right side term is the derivative of the derivative of temperature along x-axis at that point. Alpha is a material constant. In other words, the left side term is the time rate of change of temperature. The right side term is the rate of change of the rate of change of temperature along x-axis. So, this equation relates the time variation of temperature to the spatial gradient of temperature. Let's take an example. We have an aluminum rod of 1 meter in length. Aluminum has a thermal diffusivity of 0.0001 meter square per second. We freeze this aluminum rod to 0 degrees Celsius. I mean, at every point in the aluminum rod, the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. Now, Let's start heating it, say by putting it in between two heated blocks and the both blocks are at 100 degrees Celsius. The both ends of the rod are touching the heat blocks. Let us assume that an external heat source will always maintain the temperature of blocks at 100 degrees Celsius. The heat from the blocks will flow into the aluminum rod and its temperature starts rising first at the ends and gradually at the middle. This heat flow and temperature rise is a case of 1D heat conduction. We are going to predict how temperature varies inside the aluminum rod by solving the 1D the heat equation. We solve it computationally rather than analytically. Let's go ahead. Let's idealize the rod as a 1D line of 1 meter. Let's take 11 points evenly spaced along the length of the rod from one end to another. The distance between any point and the immediate next point will be 0.1 meter and this is what we call as delta x. Let's name these nodes with numbers. The points we call them here as nodes counting from left to right as first node, second node, third node and so on till 11 node. We are going to do our computations at these 11 particular locations. I mean we are going to apply the 1D heat equation at each of these specific points and see how the temperature varies at these points as time progresses. The very first time instant when the rod just came in contact with heated blocks is supposed to be t equal to zero and we compute the temperature at every time step of delta t as we progress in time. We are going to use the following terminology. Capital T i m indicates temperature at ith node and nth time step. The subscript indicates the node number. The superscript indicates the time step number. Before we begin computing the values, we should understand the conditions we have to fulfill while we are solving. Initially, at all the internal nodes, the temperature is zero. The endpoints 1 and 11 are always maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. So, we don't have to compute the temperature changes at these nodes. As time progresses, the temperature at nodes 2 to 10 is going to change. And we need to compute these values of temperature. How to compute them? We use the time derivative. To compute the temperature at time step corresponding to time t equal to delta t, we find the increment in temperature or the time step and add it to the temperature at t equal to zero. Therefore, we find the temperature at t equal to delta t as the sum of temperature at t equal to zero plus an increment. The increment in temperature can be expressed as the product of delta t and the time derivative of t. We have the following expression finally. t i1 is equal to t i0 plus delta t times the time derivative at i0. Now, to step ahead in time, we need time derivative. To find time derivative, we use the 1D heat equation. But in this equation, time derivative is again expressed in terms of temperature gradient. To find the temperature gradient at ith node, we use the central difference scheme. For this, we need to have the x derivative of temperature at locations i minus half and i plus half. Here, i minus half corresponds to location midway between i minus 1th node and ith node. 
note and i plus half corresponds to location midway between ith node and i plus oneth node they are of course separated by a distance of delta x that is 0.1 meter we now have to find the x derivative of temperature at these locations further we again use a central difference scheme at each of these midpoints i minus half and i plus half the expressions can be seen here the derivative at i minus half is expressed as a central difference of temperature at i minus oneth node and ith node the time derivative at i plus half node is expressed as a central difference of temperature at ith node and i minus oneth node now that we have the time derivatives of temperature we substitute these expressions of first order derivatives in the earlier expressions for temperature gradient and we obtain a new expression for the temperature gradient in terms of ti minus 10 ti0 and ti plus 10 so here we have an expression to compute the gradient at any node in terms of temperature at the node and its immediate neighboring nodes both on left and right side we can put this expression in the 1d heat equation and get an expression for time derivative at each node at zeroth time step we can use this time derivative and compute the temperature values at the next time step the final formula looks like this we can use the same technique and obtain a general formula to step from nth time step to n plus 1 time step which you can see here in this slide now that we have an expression to keep updating the temperature we can start writing a code to do these computations here is a matlab script you can pause here and take time reading the comments you can try to understand the script Okay, let's have a look at the results now. The results were plotted and made into a video for better understanding purpose. This is a plot at zeroth time step, that is at initial condition. The top figure shows the temperature distribution in the rod using a color map. Blue corresponds to near zero temperatures and red to near 100 degrees Celsius temperatures. Intermediate temperatures are represented as shown in color bar in the right of the figure. The second figure below the first one shows a plot of temperature and its derivative along the length of the rod. Blue line is temperature curve, the red line is its derivative. You can observe that the temperature at ends is 100 degrees whereas at internal nodes it is zero. The red line here is invisible because this is at zero time step and the computations haven't yet begun. Below these figures we have a table showing values of various parameters at all the intermediate nodes. at a particular instant of time in the first line we have the temperature at the previous time step in the second line we have the gradient of temperature in the third line we have the time derivative the fourth line has got the temperature increment the plus line has the temperature at the current time step these are the values at zero time step you can better understand this as we step ahead now we updated by one time step and you can see the changes in the temperature distribution let's see how the computations happen first the temperature gradients are computed using the central scheme at each of the internal nodes for this we use the temperature values at zeroth time step the gradient at node 2 is computed from temperature values at nodes 1 2 3 at zeroth time step similarly for node 3 we compute the gradient using the temperature values at 2 3 and 4 nodes this repeats for all nodes till node 10 as you know at node 11 we don't have to compute the temperature gradient because the temperature is fixed we don't have to update the value of temperature there in time now we have gradient at zeroth time step at all nodes we multiply this gradient at each node with alpha to find time derivative of temperature at that corresponding node this way we compute time derivatives at all internal nodes then multiplying this time derivative with delta t gives the temperature increment the temperature increment at each node is added to the temperature at zeroth time step to obtain the temperature at first time step to compute the next time step we follow same procedure but this time the temperatures at time step 1 are used to compute the gradients we can repeat this many number of times and plot this figure at all time steps you can see a video made by clipping all such images observe how the temperature and its derivatives are changing as time progresses initially the time derivatives are high at the ends and eventually they drop and spread into the rod as temperature rises in the rod the curvature of the blue temperature curve decreases the curvature of the blue curve decreases and the gradient decreases so we have the rate of change of temperature also reducing you can pause and observe values at any given instant of time to understand the computations
if you have tried this and got it right, then what next? You can think of these. What happens if the mesh size and time step changes? We took get mesh size of 0.1 and time step of one second. What happens if we change them? Will we always get better results? What happens if mesh size is non-uniform along the line? What happens if delta x is varying? Can we use the same formula, same method? What happens if conditions change? What happens if not both the ends are at 100 degrees Celsius, but one of them is at 100 degrees Celsius, whereas the other one is at 200 degrees Celsius? Can we still use the same method? How about 2D and 3D diffusion? This is just 1D. How about a 2d equation or a 3d equation can we solve it in a similar kind of manner and can you identify any other physical phenomenon that can be modeled using this diffusion equation think about them that's all for now see you later bye